Hey everyone, and welcome to the HR Vision Podcast. I'm your host, Ivo, and every week I'm going to have a conversation that matters about HR and HR technology. Hello there. Welcome to episode 42 of the HR Vision Podcast. We have a very special guest slash partner today. So let me say hi to Joe Pierce. Hi, Joe. How are you doing? Hello. Hello, Ivo. Great to, great to meet you. Well, great to meet you too. Thank you for being here. Um, and when I said Joe is a guest slash partner, it's because he's a principal of Elevated Experience at Phenom, and he's been working for this partner of ours for the past five years. So today he's here to give us a better idea of what Phenom is doing for recruiters globally and how their platform can help you hire faster, develop better, and retain longer. So, Joe, you ready? Let's start. Do it. All right. Let's start a bit uh, with you, a bit from the beginning. Give us a small introduction about yourself, your professional background, you know, what, what you've been doing at Phenom. Certainly, certainly, yeah. So I'm sitting right now in Philadelphia, which is Phenom's headquarters. Uh, I'm from Pennsylvania, grew up here, went to school here. Uh, believe it or not, I've I've only worked at Phenom. So I graduated and joined Phenom right out of university. Um, very interesting to join a startup at that point because, you know, we're a company now of 1,700 or so people. And I was uh, probably joined, I was employee number 130. Um, so the company has really grown quite a bit in five years. Wow. Um, and I've, I've seen a number of different roles here uh, and grown a lot. Um, so yeah, it's it's great. And the other interesting thing uh, from a Four Vision partner perspective um, for our audience that may or may not know, yeah, when we say that we're a partner, um, Four Vision is one of our first partners in the services space at all. Um, we've been really working with Four Vision for a number of years now in Phenom deployments globally in places like you know obviously the Netherlands, of course, uh, places in the United States, uh, you know, as far afield as South Africa uh, with the Four Vision team. So we've had a lot of a lot of success. And uh, thanks for having me. All right, great. Uh, let me let me just uh, ask you, what what attracted you in Phenom to to join the company? It was like, it sounded great. There was something about it that uh, made made your eyes, I don't know, get brighter or something. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, like many university students in the United States, I graduated with a degree and then I went into a completely different field than what my my studies were in, <laughs> yeah. right? So uh, it's quite common. Uh, I, I studied advertising and um, I had some family members in the Philadelphia area. And one of the things you have to know about our industry, which is the talent acquisition and the recruitment industry, yeah, is that it really starts with the, the advertising industry from a newspaper perspective, right? Yes. So everyone now thinks of recruiting in terms of um, talent acquisition software, whether it's SaaS software, whether it's an ATS that's part of a larger stack, it could be your, your advertising and recruitment spend in um, uh, job aggregators or in large job boards or social media advertising. But it really starts with the newspapers, <laughs> jobs in the back of the local newspaper, the national newspaper. And so I had some some relatives in the the newspaper sort of space, uh, advertising space, and and they became online job boards right around the, the sort of the the dot com era, right early two yeah. thousands before nine eleven. There were these big big behemoths like Monster, like Career Builder, uh, names that are still around, maybe not as as yeah. prevalent today, but really large job boards, and they collected jobs from all over, of course, the United States and all over the world. Yeah, and they were an aggregator and a search engine for these jobs. And so that really, that that background informed the beginning of Phenom. And so when I heard about, about Phenom uh, in 2017, I was quite interested. Um, of course, um, software is really interesting for, for uh, you know, an undergrad coming out of school in general, right? Everyone sort of dreams of going to Silicon Valley, becoming a, yeah. <laughs> the next Mark Zuckerberg or the next, uh, the next um, you know, uh, Tim, Tim Cook or something like that. So, um, yeah, that's that's what interested me. All right, all right, okay. Let's 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 move over to um, you know what what Phenom what Phenom is what it does. Let's let's start some uh, with with some general thoughts on on your general thoughts on HR tech. Of course, with special focus on talent acquisition and talent experience. So, what do you think it's the impact that uh, 
that talent acquisition, talent experience, technology can have on companies' growth and business success from, from, sure. from your experience? Yeah, so I'd like to start by discussing first sort of where I see this space, mm -hmm. and then I'll sort of address where I believe Phenom fits into that. Go for it. If that, if that works for our, our audience. So the way I see the space now is um, over the last two decades, we've seen the entire job ad, uh, the apply, the hiring process move from obviously um, on paper to on-premise and now moving to the cloud. And so that leaves us with a number of large ERP derived HCM players that really dominate the landscape today. So Workday, uh, SAP SuccessFactors, uh, Microsoft has several products that are, are in that space as well, Oracle, Cornerstone. And so, um, these organizations have developed unbelievably robust processes for managing applicant and eventually employee data yeah. and relating it to specific line of business applications like recruiting or payroll or time off benefits, things like that. But at the same time, technology has actually moved faster than those core processes. And so you've found companies um, adding bolt on solutions to your core stack. So you have companies, you know, bolting on interview management tools, assessment providers, job distribution tools, right? Sourcing tools. And so what you're, what you're left with as an enterprise is this core sort of data layer, a bunch of your own sort of line of business applications on top of it. And then a bunch of bolt ons, right? Of my various recruiting tools or my various, various employee engagement tools or talent management tools or learning and development tools. Yeah. And it becomes extremely difficult with that setup to pivot as an organization to respond to change in the market because you're you're managing um, a huge process. You're managing a number of integrations with varying degrees of of um, resilience <laughs> built into them. Right? Not all vendors are the same, yeah. uh, and not all data models are the same. And so there's always a certain amount of translation and a certain amount of interpretation. And so where I see Phenom, that sort of brings me to Phenom. So where does Phenom fit into it? So Phenom ex provides an experience layer over a company's sort of core business processes and your core data, right? So we always you know, use the example of a huge HCM, like, an or, uh, like a Workday. Yeah. Workday has developed an unbelievable process and a way to manage candidates. And Phenom's goal is really to complement that robust process in providing an e-commerce style experience um, for candidates. So if you think of applying for a job, right, you go to a sort of a traditional ATS and apply for a job, it can be sort of a painful experience. Yeah. Um, it can almost be like filling and doing, filling out your tax forms or something. Yeah. And at the same time as you're applying for a job and having this sort of maybe legacy experience, you can pick up your phone, you could, you know, get in a car and on the way you could order an Uber to the airport and on the way to the airport, you could buy a ticket with the American Airlines app order Grubhub and have it dropped off, um, you know, download a movie uh, on your on your Amazon Prime video to watch on the airplane. By the time you get to the airport, you're all set up. And so consumer expectations, consumer technologies have far surpassed what what, you know, the experiences we deliver in HR. Right. So Phenom's only goal is just to close that gap for candidates, right? Because candidates are consumers. So the same people that's looking for a job is also the same person that's ordering the Uber, that's getting the Grubhub or getting the food delivered, right? They're the same people. Um, so that's really our goal is just delighting our user groups, right? Yeah. Uh, whether those are candidates that are using our front end tools, whether those are recruiters that are using our back end tools and managers, and then employees as well, right? So just, just because you're hired and now you're through the front door doesn't mean that you immediately just become satisfied. If you're like all of us, you likely wanna grow within your organization. Yeah. You wanna find a mentor. You want to find, you want to make more money, right? You want a better title. Yeah. You want to know what learnings you need to, to take, right? Uh, what what courses, what um, mentorship opportunities, what gigs there are to pick up. So that's where Phenom really, that's the space that we play in. Evo. Okay. Okay. A lot of information to unpack here. Uh, let me, Sorry. let me ask you, um, to put it simply, and you correct me if I'm wrong, what you're trying to do is to simplify or make the recruitment processes both for recruiters and for applicants as simple and as close to B2C, let's call it, um, as close to that as possible. Is that correct? Is that the main value proposition that you guys are trying to, to achieve? Is making 
recruiters and applicants their job, you know, easier as to, you know, a, a normal B2C process would be? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. No, you're exactly right. And and we would also add to that, why, why not? Why can't it be, right? Everything else in your life when it comes to technology is easy. So why does looking and applying for a job or as a recruiter managing candidates, why does it have to feel like it's stuck in a previous era perhaps, right? Yeah. There's no There's no real reason for that. Yeah, no, I get, I get that. But how, how, how do you then, because I think that's that's uh, that's great, and it needs to and it needs to be done. But then there's also the, the evaluation part, right? Like the, the assessment of the candidate. You know, how how do you simplify that part? You know, because I guess uh, we've been talking about this, but for for our audience to understand, how do you use automation, for example, to help recruiters? sort through the, the 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 you know the the resumes and 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 the skills that you are needing for a certain position mm -hmm. because that's that's also an important part that you the assessment is important it's not only like applying needs to be easier sure but how do you assess if a candidate is correct is is the right talent for a company or not you know you know what i'm uh, asking here i do i do and there's i'm going to go into a few items here okay uh, mm -hmm. Because I think you're actually bringing up like two or three different problems, and we're sort of grouping them okay. into one. All right. And the reason I say different problems is because recruiting for a role is different depending on the type of role, right? So if you're looking for a doctor at a at a big hospital, it's very different than looking for a frontline worker at a fast food establishment, yes. right? The problems may be different. One may be a, a, a situation of you have quantity but not quality. And maybe yep. uh, the other may be a situation where you have quality, but you don't have quantity, right? Yes. Yeah. And so there's a, a few different ways to address it. And so we'll go into some examples. We'll start with we'll start with a high volume position where you get a lot of applicants and you have to do a lot of screening. So the first question from a phenom perspective is how do I manage uh, a job with quite a few candidates? Let's say I have a job open and I have literally 10,000 applications for it. And there's varying quality in the candidate profiles. My first goal as a, as a recruiter is to determine, A, who are my best fit candidates? And Phenom's a bit different. We're not just looking at applicants here. We're looking at any candidates that have interacted with your job, right? Phenom, uh, we're not going to get into it in detail today, but Phenom has a number of capabilities to identify and attribute candidate profiles, what we call leads beyond just people that explicitly apply. The same way that um, Amazon, uh, the same way that Facebook or Instagram tracks your behavior to provide you a more personalized experience and learn more about, about you, we do the same thing for candidate profiles. So to start with your, your, your talent pool for a job, let's call it a barista at a, at a co coffee's chain. Mm -hmm. We have more candidate, we have more barista candidates for you than your traditional ATS will. By okay. a large margin, generally by a large margin. So we're going to start with more candidates. Now, when you have more candidates, um, you can do the traditional sorting activities, filters, criteria, spotlight criteria. Um, but the example I like to share is our AI discovery and, and our AI fit scoring. So what the first thing that the Phenom uh, system will do is actually ingest your job description, things like the job location, the required skills, the uh, years of education required, the years of previous experience required. It'll take that framework and it'll apply it to your talent pool. And it'll actually sort your talent pool by fit. So it'll actually put your A fits, your best fit candidates to the top of your talent pool. If you, know, if, if you choose to, to, to look at your A fits. It'll of course rank by your, you know, your A and then your B and so on. And so the, the first thing that uh, you should do is focus on the best fit candidates for your role. Right. Yeah. Now that's a that's a quality problem, right? That's where you have a bunch of candidates, and you need to go ahead and um, uh, fill the roles with the best fit candidates. Now, what about the reverse? That yeah. Mentioned? What if you are getting a few candidates, and there's some good candidates in there, but your 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 qu quantity is very low, right? So you're getting a few, but you would love a much larger talent pool. And that's where the Phen the Phenom Recruiter uh, Experience RX is actually going to to help you expand. Um, so you could start with a list. You go into your list tab, you go into your candidates tab, 
And you can actually sort in the Phenom tool by filter criteria that are very wide ranging. Um, we're integrated directly with your ATS. So you can bring in candidates hiring status and actually sort by candidate hiring status and bring in candidates for other jobs that are silver medalists, for example, that were very close to getting that other job, but never got it. And so they're still in your system and there's no reason we shouldn't re resurface them to you. We also have the same AI discovery uh, capability that we use to determine fit. We can also use that to find fit elsewhere. So you can go to the AI discovery tab of your job and actually get recommendations for candidates that could be a good fit. Maybe in the, the doctor example, you know, oh, I cannot find any doctors that applied for this job. Well, let's see if there are good fit doctors that live elsewhere within your CRM, right? We can recommend you the best fit doctor candidates that are already in your CRM that you may not be aware of. So I know that was a long and um, uh, pedantic answer, but. <laughs> no, but the, but I, I guess a lot of value. I think you, you explain it. Uh, I think you explain it well. There's a lot of capabilities indeed in the in, in the system. Another another feature that I think can solve a lot of problem problems with uh, for, for recruiters is, for example, the interview scheduling automation. Right? There's how how important do you think is this uh, is this feature? Because I think it can save a lot of time for recruiters when you can grab a calendar of someone and book a meeting with them. Right? Yes, the it, it, it's funny because it's funny how annoying interview scheduling is for recruiters because you have to keep in mind from a recruiter perspective, you have two stakeholders, right? Yeah, you don't just have your your candidate. You have your actual your panel team that's interviewing on the your your side as a as a company or you have your single interviewer or you have a screening group that's doing some screening. Yeah. And so you're at the mercy of a bunch of people and it's it's a huge time suck. So if we're talking about the measurement criteria used to determine success, you're right on, even though it's time. That's that's where the savings are, right? And so uh, imagine per candidate, you're going back and forth with them on their calendar, they're sending their availability, you have your team that you're looking at their availability and you're adding invites to them. Some of them are declining and say, hey, I'm out of office today or you know, I'm on vacation or I, can you move this for me? You know, I have to leave office early, whatever. We want to remove all of that. And so I'm, I'm, I'm really happy actually you brought up interview scheduling because it's, it's one of my favorite features. It's certainly the most, in my opinion, one of the most popular features at Phenom right now, just in terms of implementations. I'm seeing, I'm seeing almost every customer um, right now that's undergoing the implementation, including it. Yeah. And so I want to talk a little bit about how it works. It's pretty go, simple. Go for it. Sure. So you have a role as a recruiter uh, or as an interview scheduler that you're working on. You simply move the um, the job, you click on the job, and you click schedule interview. You select your interview template, obviously for different types of roles in your organization. There might be director or manager roles or entry level roles, or there might be different different hiring types based on um, you know departments, things like that. You select your template for your type of interview or your type of interview um, sort of progression. You go ahead and add the the um, the people from your organization that are going to be attending, you click schedule, and literally that's it. Um, sort of the 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 Phenom virtual assistant goes out to the candidate, it interacts with them over email, it understands their answers. So if if a candidate gives a text based answer saying yes, I'm free at two p.m., the Phenom AI actually understands uh, the candidate's uh, response. If a candidate emails the AI scheduler and says, hey, we have to reschedule. The AI actually has natural language processing and can process that the candidate wants to reschedule. Um, it's also integrated with your calendar system as an organization. So it's looking at all of your panel interviewers or whoever your interviewees are, your hiring managers, and it's ensuring that the slot selected fit into their calendars as well. Uh, it's also integrated uh, with your uh, scheduling and your virtual meeting software. So if you're using Microsoft Teams, you're using Zoom. Yeah. It actually provisions the link and it puts it in the invite for you. So there's no additional work on the invite. You don't have to go in and add, copy a Zoom link and add in the Zoom link. And so um, I have a customer right now, a very large software uh, customer right now that's scheduling, I think, 44,000 interviews a year as of this year on Phenom. Yeah, Phenom interview scheduling. Uh, you can imagine the time savings per recruiter. The amount of time it takes them to schedule an interview right now is three minutes per interview and before it was something like 41 minutes. Um, if you include every time they had to go back in and check check and refresh your inbox, oh, did this candidate get back to me? Oh, we have to reschedule. I think it averaged out to be like 41 minutes per interview and now it's three. So 
um, significant. That's insane. Wow. Okay. That's a, that's a big reduction. Yeah. Yes. And as you can imagine, for large organizations, they've had to also rely on so much, so many literally just physical people to do interview scheduling. Like so many of our largest customers have little interview scheduling teams, right? So these are resources that are just working on calling candidates, confirming, doing phone screening, you know, scheduling, helping out with executive recruiting. All of this or large parts of this can be automated. There you go, people. Yeah, enough said, I think. Great feature. Um, let's let's move on. Um, I, I would like to to get a bit of your take on 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 the adoption of of talent experience platforms from everything that you you've seen. You, you, you guys also get out some some reports to the market. You know the, about about this this area. What is your take on the adoption of talent experience platforms and the common challenges that you that you've seen? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Um, let's look at the different experiences. Right, because they they vary, um, right? Um, yeah. So our candidate experience, our our career platform, where candidates are coming, applying for jobs, interacting with our chatbots. Yeah, that's yeah. obviously you know universally adopted quickly because it's that's the face of your company, right? So that's where all candidates interact with your brand. So there's really a hundred percent adoption across that product. The recruiter experience product um, is our CRM, and it has our AI discovery, it has our virtual interview scheduler, all that stuff. That's all extremely high adoption today. Um, okay. Where we're growing in adoption is our employee experience. Um, and what we found is when we deploy employee experience, which is a place again for employees to interact with jobs, find mentors, um, build a career path. What we found is it requires a shift in customer culture, right? So if you're if you're a if you're a, a organization that really is serious about retaining and promoting your top talent, it doesn't it, it's not just fixed by buying a new piece of software, right? There's a huge amount of change management that goes into building a culture that's collaborative, a place where you encourage your employees to grow and, and grow beyond just what they're doing today, right? It's where yeah. um, it, it, it's it's a corporate culture where you know um, leadership is not bartering and arguing over resources, right? They want the best for all their team members, even if that means, hey, I'm going to lose, you know, oh, Evo, my team is getting promoted. I'm going to lose him. I want to keep him on my team. That type of um, uh, sort of zero sum game mindset mm -hmm. is really important. And so a lot of a lot of Phenom employee experience uh, deployments uh, these days are including more of those change management, right? So we're doing a lot more coaching with our customers. And and that's yeah. really key to success because if if you if you buy a product and you believe hey this is now I'm going to retain everybody but then you don't actually engage with your employees yeah. and you don't you don't coach them you don't actually you know you give them a mentorship tool but you don't encourage them to get mentors yeah right, right? if you're not a mentorship culture uh, it doesn't matter what you give your employees you have to you have to build that culture from the ground up so we've seen some some great success in that uh, one of the reasons employee experience is also really starting to rocket. Is because even though it's a newer product of ours, it's newer than the recruiter and the candidate products. Yeah, it's starting to rocket also because when we're entering uncertain economic times, right, where where a company may have entered the year with you know specific growth projections and and um, you know or earnings estimates that they provided uh, to their to their board, if they're a publicly traded company, right, if they're a big enterprise, when those earnings projections are revised. Uh, what's the first thing that happens, right? Boards think, how do we um, become more efficient, right? So if you're a huge enterprise that uses Phenom, you're now using Phenom to try to repurpose your talent internally for efficiency, optimize for efficiency. That means upskilling. That means uh, training, LMS. That does mean mentorship. That means gigs. That means, you know, all sorts of corporate restructuring activities, right? Yeah. So when there's uncertain economic times, you have to invest in the quality talent you have for the long term, because you don't know your ability to grow and how that might change quarter by quarter, right? Yeah. Um, so. All right. Just one thing here. I think part of the candidate product and the recruited product is also, you know, what, what we call employer branding. Do you get some adoption there? Do, do, do you know, from your experience, are, are companies realizing more and more the importance of what you're name out there as an employer not only like the product that you sell but how how you deal with people you know how much you 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 care about your talents 
uh, are you seeing are you guys seeing a lot of um still some pushback on that or or it's something that yeah people are just realizing yeah yeah we 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 really need to put our word out there as an employer that's a great question um so from the very beginning phenom tools have been designed for our customers to be able to manage their own employer brand self-service yeah so people think of their career site this way but it's not just their career site it's managing the 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 employer brand that's delivered within even their chatbot for their mobile experience mm -hmm. the employer brand that's delivered for their events whether these are on-site events or virtual events university campus hiring um job advertising um custom landing page for specific locations or you know hey i'm opening up a new office in rotterdam as an example i need to create a rotterdam landing page and drive traffic from the very the good news about adoption actually from a phenom perspective is that from the day one of the phenom uh, sort of organization we've always been focused on self-service employer branding so our, our adoption across our uh, any of our content type or content management system all of that is sky high it's, it's in fact, in my opinion, one of the, the, the biggest selling points of the Phenom product. Now, where I see um, growth is, is making um, more of those products easier for users that don't have uh, maybe an agency mind or a creative mind, right? Yeah. Some of the largest organizations in the world, um, they uh, don't just work themselves on a brand, right? They're going to have consultants. They're going to have agencies, agencies creative marketing yeah. agencies, right? Yeah. Recruitment, marketing, advertising agencies also to to push their brand externally on social media and things. Mm -hmm. And so for the companies that have that, that's great. You know, the agencies know Phenom, they get in, they, they, they know the system. What if you're a small uh, intern uh, at, at a, a small organization that just got Phenom and someone just gave you the login and said, hey, I need you to go in and build our, our brand, right? Yeah. Your HR intern, and everyone else is too busy. Um, the system is self-service and the system is easy to use, but I'm I'm envisioning a world in the future where it's even easier, where where you have zero experience in any website design, um, because that's that's the way our CMS is moving, because I mentioned in the beginning of the, of, of the, the podcast today that um, we like to think of ourselves as focused on the consumer experience, the B2C. Yeah. And the B2C CMS these days, the WordPress, the Wix, they're unbelievably yeah. simple. They're unbelievably easy, right? Yeah. So that's, that's, I guess, how I'd address the employer brand question. All right. All right. Good. Two more things, and I'll let you go. Um, the first one is about integration with other HR tools, of course, or HR platforms, let's say big platforms like uh, SAP Workday or Oracle, you know, the, the, the platforms we, uh, we, we discussed at, uh, at the beginning in Microsoft. How important or, or is it a, a focus of Phenom to, um, to have a platform, your own uh, platforms um, to be you know, able to integrate with these other HR tools as an extent as an extension. Was that a focus from the beginning, or it's something that you just you know uh, you you realized as we as as you went by that it would be important to to integrate with these platforms. It was a focus in the beginning, um, okay. and there's a really simple reason for that, right? So, Phenom has never been or will never be an ATS, an applicant tracking system. Right, mm. because we believe that's part of core HCM functionality, like the work days, the SAPs you mentioned. And so from the very beginning, we've always known and believed that your system of record, your system of compliance will always remain your HCM, that hub. And for that reason, we've, we've integrations have always been huge. That's right. That's been, the, that's been the center of our product is the free flow of data, a few different types of data in and out of the Phenom platform. Right, the Phenom platform cannot survive without jobs. Right, jobs are are the the sort of the the products. Those those are the pairs of shoes, or those are the the bananas or apples that you would buy online at the gross online, you know, Instacart. <laughs> yeah. Those are our jobs. Uh, applicants, candidates coming into Phenom and into the ATS. Right, your applicants, and then your candidates. Yeah, and then your candidate statuses. Right. Moving candidate statuses in and out of the Phenom product as well have always been huge. So um, that's the beginning, right? So we've always had a focus on it. Where are we today? Phenom has a product called IX, Integration Experience. It's sort of the underpinning 
of Phenom's uh, sort of user experiences because it provides that free that free flow of data that I mentioned between your system of record, yeah, and Phenom, which we call sort of the system of engagement, right? Because that's where you're engaging with jobs, that's where you're engaging with candidates. Um, across the largest enterprise ATS and HCM providers you mentioned, we have a number of productized integrations. We consider them off the shelf connectors. And I think the future for Phenom is how do we ex expand that across just the larger ATSs, but into the more niche, um, right, um, HCM providers, right? Maybe you have a hiring product just for hiring healthcare workers, nurses, doctors, and things like that. And so maybe it's not an enterprise grade large tool like that, but how do we expand across um, horizontally, sort of across, uh, across um, market sectors? Um, mm. The last thing is how do you ensure reliability, stability, and scale across time, right? Because all of these providers you mentioned, they're also doing their own product releases quarterly and they're updating their yeah. integrations. So how do we make sure we stay on top of that? Build in resiliency too. When I say resiliency and when I say scalability, I mean, what if you're deploying not with Phenom in one country, but what if you're deploying in 20 countries? We have a client yeah. right now that's in 29. We have a client right now that's in 29 countries. How do we support their job pu uh, publishing in 29 languages and support their applications that come in in 29 languages? That's not really one integration, is it? It's sort of like 29 integrations. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So that's that's sort of how I think of it. And, and thankfully, we have um, across the market, we have sort of the largest percentage of any of our competitors of our employees that are engineers, if that makes sense. So the majority of Phenom, two thirds of our two thirds of Phenom are engineers out of our 1700 employees. Um, that's given us an unbelievable uh, sort of amount of maneuverability. Uh, so, awesome. all right, uh, yeah, you just you, you touched uh, a bit on the um, on my last question, which is a look into the future. Uh, I would like to understand, you know, trends that you see coming on new developments that we can expect from uh, from Phenom. I think, of course, those integrations with niche um, platforms that that could be something. But is there anything that, uh, you know, new trends or, or new developments that you see coming that uh, you think are going to break the bank? I don't know. <laughs> no, that's a great question. There's uh, first is automation. There's certain, you know, commonalities across recruiting. There's certain tasks that recruiters do. There's certain tasks that hiring managers, that interview schedulers do that are really common across, you know, much of our customer base. And when we find those trends, when we find those examples, you know, the thought is, why don't we just, you know, automate this entire process, right? So you think about interview scheduling as an automation, but interview scheduling is a series of processes. So how do we also, you know, add more functionality around automating the screening process, around automating the evaluation process, around the interview feedback process, around the uh, hiring manager approval or, or declination process? Um, hiring managers in general, um, and managers that are our frontline managers. If you're at a McDonald's or you're at a whatever, you know, Arby's, and you're you're a you're a store manager, and you're also on the side doing hiring, you likely don't have uh, you're not sitting in feet up all day because you're under feet managing a restaurant. Yeah. So how do we give a productized a small experience where a hiring manager can you know step out of the kitchen for a moment, see their candidates, uh, see their their upcoming interviews, see their evaluations for their interviews they've already done submit them back into the system and then go get back out uh, into the kitchen, right? Because they're they're not interested in becoming certified Phenom power users. <laughs> they're interested in running a restaurant or franchise. Point. So that's, I think the future is more of those productized sort of, you know, micro experiences, maybe even on a phone for some of these user groups that enable them to get Phenom information in the flow of their work, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. Again, very aligned with the, but we started on the conversation, you know, getting it closer to the B2C experience. Um, so, yeah, exciting times, I think, and the work never stops, I guess. It doesn't. That's one of the great things uh, about being in a, you know, young, growing uh, software company is is seeing this, the innovation, the reckless pace of innovation. It's awesome. Absolutely. All right, Joe. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. Uh, I, I I really appreciate you coming uh, on the podcast. I think it was very insightful. Uh, I think people can get a, a great understanding of Phenom, of what Phenom does. Um, I really enjoyed the conversation. I hope you did too. 
Uh, absolutely. If anyone you know, has any questions, www.phenom.com. It's pretty, that, pretty easy. Pretty easy uh, URL. <laughs> There you go, or you can reach Joe Pierce. Imagine now the, the thousands of people that are going to reach out to you on LinkedIn. <laughs> Joe Pierce on LinkedIn. <laughs> All right, Joe. Thank you so much. Have a have a great week. Um, people are listening out there. We'll see you next time.